Siri, what do you think about water cooling a PC? It's your opinion that counts, the technology god. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to Jay's Two Cents, and if you can't tell by the beginning of this video or even the title at the top of this video, today we are going to talk about water cooling, and we are doing it by popular demand. You've asked and I'm answering. How do you know water cooling's for you? Well, water cooling could be for everybody, but it's definitely recommended for those people who want to achieve the maximum overclock they can out of their processor or live in a hot environment. One thing I do want to let you know Water cooling isn't necessary for people who are not overclocking or even people who are doing mild overclocks because there are plenty of high-end, high-quality heatseek fans out there that offer just as much cooling capacity as some of the lower-end kits that are out there. However, there are some instances out there where water cooling just may not be for you. If you're not overclocking or you're only doing a mild overclock, there are much cheaper options out there that offer just as much cooling capacity, if not more, at a cheaper price. So keep that in mind. The price of water cooling can vary anywhere from $50 for a cheap self-contained unit like the Antec H50 or all the way up to $1000 if you go just full-blown custom water cooling loop. The problem with some of the smaller kits out there is they just do not generally offer as much cooling capacity or simplicity as a high-end heatsink fan as I mentioned earlier. The Noctua CPU heatsink fan is definitely a hard one to beat when it comes to the low-end water cooling kits as it just is a monster of a heatsink. So if you're thinking about getting something like an H50 or an H60, I would right off the bat tell you to probably go with a high-end heatseek fan like a V8 or a Noctua. I'd like to go into some of the pros and cons of the self-contained units out there for water cooling to try and give you some decision-making power if you're thinking about going that route. Some of the pros from these self-contained units are they're maintenance-free, they're cheaper, they come with a warranty, and they can fit in almost any case. However, some of the cons are they have cheap quality fans on them, the radiators are generally pretty small, Life of the pump has been known to be iffy at times, and they do not expand. So if you decide later you want to add a new part or new water pump, or just generally add more cooling capacity, you're stuck with that kit, and you have to replace the entire thing if you want to upgrade. Now, if you want to get something a little bigger, has more capacity than one of those prepackaged units, there are plenty of companies out there that offer a kit that come with every part that you need to put together a custom water cooling loop. Some of those companies are... EK, Swift Tech, XSPC, and they contain all the parts you need, radiator hose, clamps, fans, and they contain all the parts that you need to put together your loop and keep it going. The only thing you have to do is just add a fluid or a coolant, and in most cases, I recommend that you go with some sort of distilled water and PT Nuke anti-algae or a silver coil to keep any sort of algae growth or corrosion happening in your loop. The pros to these kits are everything you need is included. They generally have higher quality parts. They're generally larger parts that have more cooling capacity to them, and they are expandable. So if you decide later you want to add an, a video card to your loop, you can. If you want to add another radiator, you can. So you're not locked into just one particular kind of cooling capacity. The cons to them, though, are now you have to put the loop together. You have to make sure you do it properly, otherwise you can cause damage to your computer or the water cooling unit itself. It can leak if you don't do it properly, which would lead to a premature death of your computer. And they do require maintenance. You have to drain and refill the fluid every so often, usually once or twice a year is recommended. Otherwise, you can get corrosion or algae buildup issues. The last option would be going with a custom water cooling loop from the scratch, like you see here, which is what I did with my computer. And the pros and cons are generally the same as the prepackaged kits, a lot of the parts are actually the same. And a pro with that would be that you get to control every part that goes into your system. However, a con to that could be that you are now confused and overwhelmed with the amount of individual water cooling parts that there are when putting together a custom water cooling loop. So you might run into some part compatibility issues if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. Just like buying any new computer part, when it comes to water cooling, there are just tons of choices and it's easy to get overwhelmed and accidentally pick up the wrong part or get something that's not entirely compatible with your setup. And not only that, you might actually forget to get something that's very important and you might not realize it until it's too late and you're trying to put together your water cooling kit. Lastly, I'd like to address some myths when it comes to water cooling. And there are three major myths that I hear all the time on the forums that I go to. And I would like to go ahead and address those right now. The first one is that people will say, 
You don't have to worry about killing your computer because there are plenty of non-conductive coolants on the market. That is absolutely true. There are non-conductive coolants on the market. Fluid XP was one of the first manufacturers of non-conductive coolants on the market. However, running any fluid in contact with metal 24-7, it will eventually ionize and pick up some of those minerals and metals, thereby making it conductive. Water itself is not conductive. Pure water or distilled water does not have any elements in it that conduct electricity. However, tap water does, which gives people the misconception that water conducts electricity. What actually conducts the electricity inside of water are the minerals that it picks up in the pipes that's carried to your home. But if you were to take distilled water from the grocery store and do a conductive test on it, you would see that it's actually very resistant. The second myth I want to address is probably one of the most common I hear in the forums and it's very frustrating to try and explain this to people, but people have this idea that if you go water cooling, your room's not gonna get as hot or your office or wherever you have your computer. Here's the bottom line, people. Whether you have a heat sink and a fan taking the heat away or you have the water and a radiator taking the heat away, you're taking the heat out of your component and sending it to the atmosphere. Fans and radiators are just two different methods of the same result. Just because you go water cooling does not mean your room or your office is gonna be less warm when you're gaming. If anything, you might actually find that the room is hotter because you're getting a better thermal conductive element to your cooling system. So you're taking more of that heat out of your processor and your video card or whatever you're cooling and moving more of that heat into the atmosphere. The last thing I hear people say all the time is, I wanna go water cooling because I wanna go completely silent. And I've even seen some pictures of people who've gone water cooling and removed all of their case fans with the exception of the fans on the radiator. That is bad. Just because you have water cooling in your system does not mean you are water cooling every part that contains heat. There are plenty of elements on your motherboard that still require air to flow over them to cool them off. It is true that you can run your fans at a lower speed on the radiator. However, just like anything else, the actual cooling capacity of the radiator is dependent on the amount of air flowing through it. You have to take that heat from the radiator and exchange it to the air and carry the air out of the radiator in order to take the heat out of the water. So if you have your fans set to the lowest speed possible on the radiator, yes, it is extremely quiet. However, you are reducing the thermal capacity of the radiator itself. So there is a bit of an exchange. You can go with more radiators at a slower speed to get the same result, or go with a smaller, thicker radiator with a higher speed fan and get the same exact temperatures. There is a science there and you have to know that science before you either undersize or oversize your cooling capacity based on decibel requirements of your space. So if you want something extremely quiet, you're gonna have to go with more surface area, larger radiator, or more radiators in order to get that same effect. On my system, I run a dual radiator setup. I have a triple 120 millimeter up top, which is an XP Extreme Edition from SwiftTech, and I have an XSPC Quiet Edition radiator at the bottom of the PC, and they are both in the same loop. And I'm running fan control software that controls both radiator fans independently from each other. One is controlled through the CPU, and one is controlled through the GPU. So if I'm running a CPU intensive task, I can have one radiator crank up while the other one stays at the same speed, allowing me to customize the noise levels depending on the load of the graphics card and CPU inside of my system. I hope you found today's video useful and some of this information can help you decide whether or not water cooling is for you. It's impossible to cover every single aspect of water cooling in a single video on YouTube, so I ask that if you have any questions regarding water cooling that you put them down in the comments and I'll do the best I can to answer all of your questions. Don't forget to subscribe if you've enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more, click the video on the left to see my brand new show coming out every single Friday called Tech Addiction, where I talk about cool and interesting things happening in the technology world across the globe. Click the video on the right if you'd like to see my latest Let's Play with Holiday Doc, playing Borderlands 2 with some really funny commentary. And if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter for the latest news on what I'm doing on YouTube.